Hello, language learners. Here is the second part of the video about multicultural communication. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate traps you can fall into even in simple everyday situations. Hope it will save you a lot of frustration and unpleasant moments. So let's get started. In the first part, I talked a lot about the concept of distance and individualism. Let's see how it looks practically in communication. The first thing you should keep in your mind regarding this issue is turn taking and the idea of awkward silence. They differ across the countries. Overlapping speech is quite acceptable in my culture. The same is uh, for Jewish culture. It shows that interlocutors are very interested in the topic and enjoy their conversation. But in many cultures, overlapping speech is impolite. My countrymen, Belarusians, are quite wordy. The same is true for many other countries in Eastern and Southern Europe. When we see someone reluctant to talk, we encourage them uh, with our own example. We are keen to talk about ourselves, to show that we are open and predictable. Uh, to my great surprise, when communicating with my Chinese friends, I seemed to behave like a self-centered and egoistic person who talked all the time and didn't give other any chance to say a word. However, my intention was just to encourage others to talk uh, and to feel the pause I interpret it as awkward silence. Now I understand that Chinese awkward silence is three times longer than the Belarusian one. And what I should do is just shut up and wait until someone starts talking. Another thing we should be aware of is remarks about the conversation we are having. Traditionally, Asian cultures are defined as collectivistic, uh, so it is not appropriate when interlocutors regulate the mode of uh, their conversation. If you talk too much, too fast, if you say, no if you say some nonsense, nobody would point it out to you. I heard from a Chinese student that Australians are not polite enough since they didn't take into account that when talking to foreigners, they should have spoken slower and clearer. From my perspective, uh, they uh, just uh, imply that if foreigners have problems with understanding them, they let it know. Not only general rules uh, that govern communication differ across the cultures. Typical situations and uh, script scenarios uh, for these uh, situations differ as well. Let's start with situations, with the situations. Some of them are just not common or maybe better word is some of them are not direct, like giving pieces of advice, complaining or gossiping in Anglo-Saxon cultures. Not direct uh, from my perspective, from uh, the perspective of uh, my Belarusian culture. Many Eastern Europeans uh, give pieces of advice uh, directly, notoriously, and without being asked for it. Sometimes uh, it is annoying, but 
generally we feel real real care and concern behind it so uh, the advice in this case uh, giving advice uh, pieces of advice uh, is a way to express uh, sympathy english native speaker even when asked for advice doesn't express it directly as Anna Wierzbicka explains in her book, a typical Polish native speaker says, I advise you, say him the truth. An English native speaker says, If I were you, I would tell him the truth. Why don't you tell him the truth? I think that would be best. Why not to tell him the truth? I think that might be best. Maybe you ought to tell him the truth. Do you think it might be a good idea to tell him the truth? If you are from Eastern Europe, never complain to English native speakers. If you do it, it will make you even more frustrated. Usually when we complain, it is presumed that we want to get sympathy, but indirectly. So our interlocutor knows very clearly what he or she should uh, do. They should assure us that we are wonderful, clever, talented, that unfavorable circumstances caused uh, our failure and frustration, possibly our authorities, uh, very often uh, we blame them. Uh, so we uh, and our interlocutor line up with the idea that we have an awful president and a terrible government. And it's a very comforting scenario for us. Maybe it's not very productive uh, if you want to solve the problem. Uh, but uh, it's uh, definitely uh, comforting uh, uh, if uh, you need to get some um, emotional support or sympathy. Talking about gossips, I would not say that people in Australia don't gossip, although that was my first impression. But in one evening with my Polish friends, I usually hear more gossips than with Australians for five years. Gossiping in Eastern Europe might be nasty, but not always. And generally, it gives you a feeling, quite comforting feelings that you know what is going around you. Of course, there are some universal situations like receiving guests but they might imply radically different scenarios um, and as a result for example if you are a japanese invited to an american house you might have hard times you will be tortured by options and alternatives regarding all possible drinks and food as far as I understand, Japanese people feel very awkward in this situation because in their culture, uh, it is presumed that hosts think over very thoroughly uh, what can please their guests and guests are just uh, eat what uh, is given to them and was chosen uh, and prepare it uh, for them. Not eating the food given to you as a guest might be offensive uh, in many cultures. Since food has been associated with well-being and health, people may refer to it when complimenting. And it is not always a good idea, like in the case of one Kenyan guy who said to his American colleague after she returned, uh, returned uh, from your holiday. Did you have a nice vacation? You look like you've eaten very well. 
I think the only way she could uh, uh, interpret have interpreted it uh, is uh, the suggestion that she has uh, gained some weight. As you see, typical phrases ascribed to uh, particular situations may vary across cultures. People with different cultural background often interpret them literally. Maybe the most uh, common example is uh, English, uh, is the English question, um, how are you? Some non-native speakers give detailed reports about recent events in their personal and professional life uh, as an answer uh, to this question. What else can cause misunderstandings during intercultural communication? The different framing of a situation could Pellegrino Riccardi in his TED Talks describes hilarious dialogues between his Italian fa father and his Norwegian wife. For example, his wife puzzled uh, his father proposing to go to a forest. If you have no forests in your country, you may not understand that that is a clear suggestion to go for a walk. Since you don't have a concept of walking in the forest as a great joy, uniting with nature when you are surrounded by tall trees, the lovely smell of pines and quietness interrupted only by the sounds of birds. By the way, I couldn't explain uh, the fun of picking mushrooms to my Australian instructor because uh, he tried to find uh, logic in it. Why do people spend long hours uh, walking and searching for something you can easily and cheaply buy in a local shop? To be really in it, you should be taught uh, that picking mushrooms is a combination of gambling and poetry. Gambling because you never know uh, whether you find something or not. Poetry because it usually happens in early autumn when leaves are colored in, colored in yellow and red and there are fogs. Smells are more cute uh, and you have a very clear feelings that all this beauty will disappear soon and long, long winter will come. Not mention that uh, you have read a lot of poetic descriptions of autumn and picking mushrooms in your childhood and uh, it shapes your perception this way. On the other hand, if you are not Australian or American, you hardly can understand the idea of going for a drive. I can understand the fun of walking, but what enjoying and relaxing could be in a drive? Uh, you don't move and see uh, the landscape through the window of your car. Another funny story Pellegrino Riccardi tells I strongly recommend the video about his Norwegian experience, I'll leave the link, um, is about photographing the landscape. His father attempted to do it from the driven car and even asked his wife to stop uh, the car be because he wanted to take a picture. This time his wife was uh, very surprised because she didn't find anything remarkable in the field they drove through. For her it was an ordinary boring landscape, but for an Italian it might be quite special. So different framing leads to different logic. Besides that, cultures have different procedures of reasoning. English native speaker gives you the conclusion first and 
the explanation and arguments uh, after that. In many other cultures, people explain the reasons first and then go to a conclusion. So when your foreign interlocutors say something weird or not related to the topic, don't rush to thinking that they are strange or dumb. Just remember, their system of meaning is shaped by their language and culture, and it could be quite different to what you have in your head. It sets a lot of traps in everyday communication. Intonation and pausing may have additional meanings. Words in different languages are equivalents only partly, so that the conceptual system uh, that speakers of different languages have are not the same. I will dive uh, into this topic in my next video. Cultures have different scenarios to the same everyday situations and ideas what ideas about what is appropriate, acceptable and polite might be radically different across the cultures. Syntax imposes different ways of reasoning and concluding. But if you are patient, ask more questions and clarifications, it will become clearer for you what exactly has caused this particular miscommunication. So thank you very much for your attention and good luck in our global multicultural world. If you need any help uh, with English, Russian or Polish, please book a lesson with me via email olga.nestel at gmail.com.